It's, it's me, Lil Ninja, back with another video, and today we're doing What If Deku Had the Gum Gum Fruit Part 1. And I have to say a few things. I know I wasn't supposed to be doing any new videos, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to post, post yesterday. But this will be coming out today because the, po the video that I was supposed to do yesterday... Uh, I kind of didn't like that one. Also, it was it uh, had an error, so, error. So either way, I wasn't reposting that. So yeah. Also, I will be posting one new video. Actually, let's make that two new videos every week, only two. So I can do. So that means I'll also be making videos on Friday and sometimes Monday from now on. So that way you guys can have a daily dose of my videos. Also, we are almost at 300, 300 subscribers and I will be doing a one hour special when we get to 300 subscribers. So let's get it. And uh, yeah, that's basically all I had to say. So without further ado, let's get into the video. It's Little Ninja time. Off where most of my stories start off with Izuku being four year old, four years old. But another thing that happened, we don't start off when he's told that he's corkless. We start off after the fact that he is told that he is corkless. Izuku would be in his room all day trying not to think about him being him, himself being corkless, not wanting to hurt himself even more, thinking that if he just doesn't think about it, he'll wake up from this horrible dream and he'll go to the cork doctor again and he'll have a cork. Unfortunately for Izuku, he doesn't have a cork. Inko would realize it is finally time to do the thing that her gr her grandfather told her to do if one of their family members were ever corkless. Because that would mean something big. Inko would look in the closet, would get a chest out from the closet, and two notes that she was supposed to give to the corkless person in their family. Inko would open Izuku's door and would tell him to open this note, this letter, and then this other letter. It's a letter from great grandpa. And Izuku would open the letter knowing that he only had a few years with great grandpa. Looking at the letter, hello, kiddo. If you're reading this, this means you're four, year old, four years old and I'm gone. But don't worry, this letter also means that you don't have a cork. Now, I was preparing for this moment. This letter was meant to tell someone that doesn't have a cork. Luckily, this letter was meant for you. Meaning that you get to have an inherited power that goes all the way back to the pirate ages. Not to mention... Since you are a part of this family, you have something, some things that no other family has. Something called hockey. Not many people have it, and not many people still have it. But since you are in this family, you are most likely to have hockey. Of course, your mother does not have hockey. And she was born with a cork. But this is another thing this note is supposed to tell you. First, I'll start from the beginning. The story that was passed on from our ancestors. Story of Monkey D. Luffy. Your name, your last name, is not Midoriya. That's just the name that your mother adopted. Your real name is Monkey D. Izuku. That is the name that you go by now. To carry on your ancestor's name. The story is about a young boy who is granted the ability of the gum gum fruit and his brothers were who were granted the ability of the fire fire no me or also known as flame flame fruit. So you there are two fruits in this box that your mother will give you choose to eat one of them. They will grant you an ability. 
Also, the second note will allow you to know all the abilities that your ancestors made for these fruits and how to use hockey in these different fruits. Izuku would open the box, seeing the fire fire no me and the gum gum fruit. Not knowing which one to choose, he would dice both of them up, cutting uh, some of the gum gum fruit and cutting some of the fire fire fruit. Him eating one, one uh, both of them, with him uh, getting the bitter uh, taste of the gum gum fruit and the fire fire fruit, even worse since he combined both of them. He would almost throw up at the bad taste of the gum gum of the two fruits until he would realize uh he finally get, did it he got the power he feels all the power surging through him now i know what you're thinking someone cannot have two devil fruits well it's possible but you have to be of the monkey d family to have two devil fruits or very or have very powerful willpower Yes, someone in the Monkey D family did have two Devil Fruits before. If you don't know this, then you need to catch up on uh, One Piece. So, you can go do that. <sighs> Izuku would feel the power surging within him. The power of the Fire Fire Fruit and the Gum Gum Fruit. He would look, open the other notes, seeing all the moves that his ancestors left for him. He would also see a also a ps down at the bottom seeing ps right now there are only 10 devil fruits that still exist and sometimes there are ones that are created but nowadays there's only ever 10 devil fruits that are in existence in one year so you shall have uh you shall have these two devil fruits i knew you i kind of knew you were going to eat both just a guess, I guess. Izuku would read the rest of the note. P.S. Don't tell anyone that doesn't have a devil fruit about your devil fruits. Pass them on as a cork. And seeing this, he would know to pass it on as a half and half cork. Also, don't eat, I mean, don't accept All Might's cork. Izuku would not know what this means at the time, but yeah, his grandfather was friends with All Might. Inko would open the door once again, asking Izuku how he was doing, and then she would see the bite marks of both of the fruits. And she would try to get him to spit one of the fruits out until she realized she already swall he already swallowed both of them. And then she realized that he's not dead. Usually when somebody eats two devil fruits, they die from the power building up with inside of them. Although his devil fruits just evolved, making them more powerful, with him being able to switch through one or two, or combining both of them at the same time. Izuku would decide to start his training with hockey, since he also felt hockey before. Although it's harder for him in the past few years, he decides not to use it until he is uh, basically meets someone very powerful. Of course, Katsuki wouldn't try to attack uh, Izuku until, uh, I mean, because he knows that Izuku has a quote-unquote quirk. So, yeah. Izuku would look through, would uh, basically go, I mean, we time skip to the actual start of the anime with uh, the teacher uh, try, say, uh, throwing all the aptitude tests on the floor, saying that he knows all of you want to become heroes. With that, Izuku would not flash his cork, knowing that this is just stupid thinking. Not having the mindset of Katsuki, but having the mindset of where he knows at least some of them won't make it to the hero course. And then he, as Katsuki would start to say his, you know, I'm better than you stuff, he would tell Katsuki to stop and would start grabbing Katsuki by the ear. Basically, Izuku being the force that can drive Katsuki from stop bullying, meaning that Katsuki isn't as mean as he used to be, but he is still as cocky, and he is also still, like, uh, how would I say this? He's still, like... 
yeah, just cocky. He's uh n- tries not to be mean as much, but he's also uh doesn't have his goons either to help him since he's uh Izuku stops him from bullying at all. <sighs> Izuku would say, "You you all will have to train hard to try and beat us into UA though, since actually all of the class wants to go into UA, not just Izuku and uh Katsuki. Everyone wants to go into UA." Who? Uh, what am I supposed to be doing next? Oh yeah. As Canon Izuku would meet the <clears throat> sludge villain, and would act at this time would actually use a gum gum pistol to splatter the uh, sludge villain across the whole underpass. With All Might seeing this, saying, you have a lot of power, but you're not supposed to use your cork in, uh, without a permit, young man. I'll leave you off with a warning, but thank you for catching this villain for me. Izuku would be keeping himself in, uh, thinking about what his grandfather had his note for him. Then he would uh, basically think, I wonder what, <clears throat> my voice is just not right today. Wonder what Grandpa meant about his cork. Don't accept All Might's cork. I wonder what that meant. Izuku would just walk off until he would see the sledge villain again. This time it would be covering Katsuki. Katsuki would be squirming around trying to get out of the sledge villain. With Izuku noticing this, with Izuku just running towards Katsuki, not thinking at all, him using a gum gum uh jet pit I mean yeah, a gum gum jet pistol with him inside of gear two. Splattering a the uh uh the sludge villain again everywhere. With Izuku uh with uh Bakugo getting freed from the sludge villain and then Bakugo running off, not wanting to look Deku in I mean Izuku in the face after he just saved him. Izuku would just uh smirk a little, thinking that uh Bakugo's probably so embarrassed. All Might would look at this seeing that Izuku saved someone on impulse, not thinking to wait. After this, All Might would show Izuku his true form and would ask him does he want more power? And all Izuku would say, no, my grandfather told me not to take your power, whatever your power is. Wait a minute, you said your grandfather? And then he realized who Izuku's grandfather is, one of the only people that All Might told, to, uh, told his secret to. Your grandfather is the one that taught me to control my hockey. Yes, in this one, All Might does have hockey. But All Might doesn't use it that much because it uh it strays away to uh from, it strays away from his well cork, instead of just turning into metal. I might do one with Izuku only having all the hockey. Actually, no, that wouldn't really make sense. Actually, it kind of would. I really don't care. I probably would give him hockey either way. His, uh, basically All Might's. Izuku's great grandfather was all I mean great great grandfather was All Might's uh basically trainer that allowed him to use hockey. Izuku would ask him why did why would my grandfather uh choose you to be one of the people to use hockey? Uh All Might would say he doesn't know, but he he wants to repay uh his grandfather by training Izuku. Izuku would gladly accept since he's still kind of an All Might fanboy and would actually start to go train on the beach, clearing all the stuff up that's on usually on the beach from the beach. Uh, let me take a breather real quick. I gotta get my voice a rest. Okay, I'm back even though it only felt like one second while I was gone. Uh, mm. Okay, yeah, Izuku is at the beach, cleaning up the beach with his flame gum gum. I mean, hit with his flame fruit, using his flames to incinerate all of the trash. When he switched his gum, which when he switches to gum gum, he smashes the trash and starts moving it off the beach with his extra well, 
he starts actually, uh, he would start dragging it with his, uh, basically gum gum arms. After he would finish, uh, basically, uh, what, what's the name? Dragging all the, uh, stuff off of the beach. All Might would tell him it's time for him to train with hockey, especially since his body is ready for hockey now. Since you are a part of the the Monkey D family, you should be able to use all forms of hockey. There are three forms of hockey. Not Sometimes hockey is not strong, but for you it should be extra strong. Since you are a part of this family, I mean a family that has hockey running through their blood. All Might would explain armor armament hockey first showing him uh basically his armament hockey then izuku would try armament hockey for himself him getting it the first try although the first try it wasn't that strong all might try punching it and it still bounced back like rubber although the rubber was a little bit tougher this time izuku would ask what is the next form of hockey is uh uh all might would say the next form of hockey well the two next forms of hockey i do not have i only have armament hockey but you should have conqueror's hockey and visual hockey with him explaining what conquerors and visual hockey is izuku would uh use would uh Use both very powerfully with his conqueror's hockey being more powerful than both of the other hockeys. With him basically with his visual hockey only being able to see about a few miles with, uh, above his regular sight. So yeah, Izuku would train with this for the rest of the five months. About that, had to leave for a second. Uh, Izuku, we time skipped to the five months later with Izuku uh, finally getting. And to I mean, finally taking the entrance exams for UA and all that stuff, you know, the basics of the basics. Him getting uh, basically the bare minimum on the test because, like, he's a part of the Monkey D family. And once he got his cork, that's all. I mean, once he got his fruits, that's all he wanted to train with. Uh, uh Yeah. So he's basically like Luffy in a sense with his marts, but not really in personality. He won't try to solve things being like a brute, but he will solve things with words most of the time. He will only fight when he has to fight. So yeah. Izuku would basically get the bare minimum on the test, being like top. How many people take that test? I don't really know how the exact number, and I don't really want to find out right now. Because, like, that's a lot of competition, especially for UA. Like, seriously. Izuku would walk up to the gate, him having his arms crossed with a big smile on his face. With everyone just looking at him. Hey, isn't that the kid that was, uh, that was a late bloomer for about three years? Like, he is famous, basically. Because most of the people here are from his school but not in his class and then he realizes looks like those suckers didn't really want to come to ua and yes they weren't ready for it then bakugo starts to walk up to midoriya hey midoriya how many times do i have to tell you bakugo it's not midoriya it's monkey d whatever your name is what do you think you're gonna get on the test i bet mine's higher than yours Izuku would just glare at uh, Bakugo with Bakugo glaring back. <sighs> huh. Looks like you haven't changed, Bakugo. Neither have you, Izuku. They would do this basically fist bump and they would get ready for the, uh, uh, the rest of the entrance exams. With as soon as the gates opening, Izuku would slam his feet into ground, the ground, bouncing him off, and then using enough pressure as soon as he lands to go straight into gear second. With Bakugo blasting off with his uh, with his uh, explosion course, 
while he's in gear second he would instantly sw- switch his arms into fire i mean switch his arms into the fire fruit form yes he can switch his certain body it took him a while that's what he trained on the, for the rest of the five months as well it took him a while to to do that instead of just switching uh, one part it basically now he can choose the part of his body that he wants to be either rubber or fire he would make one of his arms fire with the other one being rubber with uh him using a uh, gum gum pistol and fireballs to attack all the robots with most of his attacks like the gum gum pistol being able to one hit them then he would turn his other arm back into gum gum and would start jumping up in the air using gum gum aerial gatling a form that he decided to make up with using the other forms of the gum gum fruit now he would be using all of his limbs and directing it at a certain uh certain place uh basically defeating a bunch of robots with uh basically none of them being able to get back up Izuku would keep running and then suddenly Gear Second would uh, run out. He would decide to use something a little bit more destructive. With him turning his fist into flames, but combining it with his gum gum fruit as well. Turning his... I don't have enough time, dang it. See you guys later. Bye. Ninja says bye.